This is a Make Medic presentation on the Mead Guidelines. Mead Guidelines have superseded the Marzipan Guidelines in terms of giving a device for the acute management of eating disorders. Eating disorders are a group of conditions that have high levels of mortality and morbidity due to suicide as well as the consequences that come from severe malnutrition. Mead stands for Medical Emergencies and Eating Disorders and they are guidelines to help clinicians to recognise and to manage such scenarios. The main areas covered by these guidelines include firstly risk assessment, measures for assessing a patient who may actually have normal blood tests, for example the sit up stand squat test for muscle weakness, measuring temperature for hypothermia and ECG changes that you may see before and after refeeding. There are red, amber, green tables to help with the clinical assessment of these features, but ultimately it comes down to clinical judgment. Some factors that might cause you to consider a person to be high risk could include BMI less than 13 in an adult, heart rate of less than 40 or ECG changes such as a long QT, fluid refusal or signs of dehydration, daily purging behaviours or extreme exercise, and self-harm or suicidal ideation. And this is not an extensive list, hence it needs to act alongside clinical judgment. Location of care. Adult patients with an eating disorder would be best managed in a specialist eating disorder unit if they are requiring inpatient care. However, if they are severely unwell, metabolically unstable, or requiring close monitoring in a medical or biochemical sense, they may warrant treatment in an acute medical hospital. Refeeding is a complex topic and the guideline offers support with this. Features of refeeding syndrome could include low potassium, phosphate or magnesium, peripheral edema or circulatory overload, or disturbances to organ function. For example, a raised ALT, cardiac or respiratory failure, or pulmonary edema. The guidelines also look at behavioural manifestations, and these can be immensely difficult to manage on a difficult ward without specialist support. For example, patients feeling so distressed and or anxious that they might be disposing of food or finding mechanisms to continue exercising in secret. Example cases are given in the Mead guidelines and are worth having a read through. The guidelines have advice for involving family and carers, which play a big role in recovery. Compulsory admission. The guidelines talk about legislation. For example, a doctor above F1 level, i.e. someone who is fully registered, can section a patient with a 5-2 if they don't feel that a patient can safely leave the ward. Similarly, nurses have a holding power of 5-4. Eating disorders are classified as mental disorders, so therefore they can be subject to compulsory treatment under a mental health legislation. However, a 5-2 is a holding power rather than a treatment power. The Mental Capacity Act, however, can also apply if a person cannot weigh up the benefits of treatment due to their eating disorder. Broadly though, if you're getting into this kind of scenario, you should be seeking advice from mental health teams as it is very complex. Finally, the management of diabetes mellitus in the context of eating disorders can significantly increase both short and long term risk. Thank you for listening. The full need guidelines can be found by the Royal College of Psychiatrists website.